Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Balashi at 93 in the One Minute Fool on ICC. Balashi at 93 is playing what looks to be some sort of pet system of his. I guess I'll just see, see some center space and see how it goes. Uh, knight g5, maybe? Attacking e6 and f7 could be useful. Let's take. Maybe I'll get my knight in here. He can just take, though. That allows knight d6. This could be trouble for him. And now maybe just C takes, because <clears throat> F7 will be weak regardless. Now I'm thinking maybe, well, he's just letting me do this. I should have taken the other way, actually. Uh, let's just hide the king. I was thinking maybe it would have been better um, for me at some point to play B3 and Bishop A3 with this king on E7. We'll see if it matters, but it could have been a better way of playing this whole position. Actually, the way I'm playing it now is kind of a Check. positional way of going about things. His dark squares are going to be really weak. G6 is undefended. I can just take that. Who knows how big my advantage is, though, in this position. Looks pretty big, though. Looks sizable. I'll go rook G3 soon. Mm, better do that just to cover my back rank. Time warning. i got to watch my time a little bit. He's going to be going fast, too. Let's go b3, kick him out. Knight g4, maybe? Let's see if we can swap. Really want to trade those dark square bishops. Oh, there's got to be some sort of mate <clears throat> or something going on. Yeah. I am not playing this game well, guys. Check. Oh, wow, yeah, he totally pre-moved me. <laughs> Check. Ah, okay. <laughs> I continue my streak of playing really poorly in the first game of the session. Yeah, he got me with Rook E5. Rook E5 was uh, a nice attempt to catch me in a pre-move, and it worked. Because, yeah, I pre-moved 96. But, um, yeah, <clears throat> my conversion of the position just left much to be desired here. I mean, in this position, just knight g takes f7 was much better. And then take the rook on h8. Actually, maybe that wouldn't have mattered so much. Somehow I was under the impression that knight g takes f7 worked for me, but maybe not. Okay, so I'm down to 25-27 after that game. Platyborg is our opponent here, playing this old line again. See if he plays b5 or takes. Yeah, he plays the capture line. Okay. Go knight d2. Another line that I think is just ever so slightly better for white. Let's go work off c1. It's just such a minuscule advantage, but it's a nice one. I'll take here and then knight c4. Do I win a pawn by doing this? Looks like it. b6 and uh, e5 are both hard to defend. So now I will start staking out territory on the dark squares. Bring my king up to e4 first. Uh, actually, this is easier than I anticipated. Yeah, he just resigned. Okay. So that was a good game. First game was not. <laughs> Where did he go awry in this one? I don't know about knight b6. I think knight b6 is like a suboptimal move here. I'm not too sure about that one. Oh, and also I played um, I played something unusual. Usually I play knight d2, but bishop c5 is kind of interesting, keeping the knight out of c5. Since knight d2, as I played previously there, could be bet by knight c5 to e6. Uh, let's see. Innocent boy is the next player. Well, if Innocent Boy is a Grandmaster, I don't think he's so innocent. He's just uh, maybe a baby-faced assassin. Okay, this is like resembling an exchange slav. I'll go h6. Queen b6, looks fine. Go knight, knight in here. Uh, let's see if we can swap a pair of minor pieces. He can get his rook into c7 after this, though. This is okay, though, because maybe I can use the c3 square to my advantage. 
Yeah, like, <clears throat> how about knight c3 now? Threatening knight e2 and also the pawn on a2. Has to play like rook a1 or something. Not fun. Yeah, rook a1, I'll play a5. Okay, how about this? Still has to be very careful. He's slowly going to try to unwind. We'll go here. His bishop could be in jeopardy too. How's he going to defend that piece? He's got to go all the way back to a3. This is a nightmare to defend. Absolute nightmare. I'm just going to not give him the c-file yet. Um, that was a good move by him, actually. My positional advantage is huge here. Not often you see a position where the two bishops just get dominated like this. Yeah, I'm going to win the b3 pawn. Just outright. Go here, threaten knight e2, and threaten a4. Let's just take that. Yeah, he's got some activity with rook c8, but that's it. He resigned. Okay, that was a nice one. Who is this player? Innocent boy. Doesn't say. No name given. I'll play this line. Then b5, a4. Knight a2, and then take on c4. Now bishop d2, they usually play a5, and you try to maneuver the knight to b3. He seems to know what to do in this variation, so I don't think I'm going to be getting much, if anything. Yeah, now rook fd8 is the move. Go bishop b5. Okay, so now I can try to play f3, and then get my bishop to f2. It's kind of the way you want to go about doing this. And then an eventual e4 is what we're looking at. Um, hmm. Guess I'll play rook c2. Maybe I can double up and then play for e4 that way. He has a hard time moving in this position. So do I, though. Guess I'll play g3. I towards playing this move. <laughs> okay, we're going to go for some trades. If he allows. Because now if he trades queens, a5 is weak. Yeah, I win the a5 pawn. Just straight up. e5 is weak. Uh, let's advance this a pawn now. He's not in a good position to stop it. Let's go here. I want to infiltrate somehow with my rook. I can come up here. Time uh, warning. Maybe... Okay. I'm going to try to somehow work my pieces in. I don't know exactly how, though. Okay, now I can take that Check. pawn. He has almost nothing to do here. Check. Very little to do. Check. Um, let's go here. Yeah, his knight is like virtually stuck. Check. Check. Mm hmm. He's just pre-moving now. Check. 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 All right. Let's see if we can get that last couple pawns of his. All right, we got him on time. Seventy-three moves that game. Okay. Well, this seems like a good opponent. I mean, he's plenty strong. Yeah, I like the way I played this for the most part. I actually don't think he should take on d4 right here. Usually black should keep the tension. Like, bishop d5 would be a better move in this position, attacking my knight on b3. That would force one of my knights back to d2. All right, same opponent. Innocent boy. Doing this transposition into an exchange slav or some type of slobby position. He can go bishop f4, it's true. Mm, let's go knight e4. I guess I'll try to put my bishop on b4 now. Maybe b6 after this? Undermine? That loses a pawn, actually. I probably shouldn't have done that. He can take on c6, but I at least have counterplay. At least I have counterplay. <coughs> or I thought I did. Is this piece getting trapped? 
Um, yeah, it might be. What can I do about that? E5, I guess? I have to do something. Oh, my rook is under attack. Ah, uh, that's bad. Okay. Yeah, this Check. is no good. No good. Alright, I'm just going to resign this game. My bishop got messed up on b4. Really can't save it in this position, huh? Because bishop a5 runs into b4. So that doesn't do. g5, he just takes it with check. Yeah, I think I'm just losing a piece here. Ouch. Hmm. That's kind of weird. I've never seen a strong player play it this way. Like g3, bishop g2, and then d4 after that. Not sure what to think of that. Regardless, I'm at 2540, so still hanging around the mid 2500s. <coughs> and I'm still not over this cold that has been plaguing me for the past two weeks. It's really getting old by now. I know so many people who are sick around here. It's just that time of year. What else can you say? Who's in the pool right now? Hmm. Anybody super high rated? Here's this guy that, this I am with a very, very modest rating. Julio Eduardo Ostos. Don't know what his deal is. It's just, um, it's, I don't know. I guess he's just really, really slow. But it's strange because I mentioned before, he's played 72,000 one minute games, but he's never broken 2,000. His highest rating achieved was 1975. All right, we're playing spirals this time. Spirals played an early h3 for unknown reasons. This will take. Play e5. This setup I don't think is so good for him. At least I don't like it that much. Go a5, try to go a4. Oh yeah, now I got the d4 square. I'm going to try to send my knight to that square already. Like maybe go knight f8 to e6. Yeah, now I can get the knight in here. This will be awesome. Position is uh, almost playing itself once I get that knight entrenched on that square. I'll bring my queen up to b4, see if I can maybe harass his... Um, I thought I got I to gotta take some measures against that, don't I? I guess I'll bring it back for now. Check. Check. Uh, okay, well, let's take once. Bring the knight back here. Can, he can play knight f3, that's true. Hmm. Well, my advantage is kind of slipping away. Uh, huh. I can't go king... Time. I can't go king f8 because uh, he had knight h7. Unfortunately. Let's do this. Ooh, that's not a good move I can take here. Uh, f6. Let's go here, attack that pawn on c4. It's going to be a time scramble. Check. Check. I think I got him on this one, though. Yeah, okay. All right, so closer than I would have liked against Spirals. I think when I had uh, that knight on d4, I should have been able to come up with something more constructive, but it's one of these cases where even though you have an outwardly great piece, it's not easy to like improve your position right away. So it's going to take me many moves. Like Maybe here, something to solidify e5 might have been better. Not sure exactly what. Maybe I should have flicked in bishop b4. Ooh, actually... It'd be thematic to play bishop b4, and then when the rook moves, take the knight on e1. Because I'd love to get a dark square bishop for knight trade. Then there's nothing to stop my knight from sitting on d4 indefinitely. Yeah, that would have been nice. Okay, so still in the pool. Not sure who gross 74 is. Russian Grandmaster, Andre Nikitin. Okay. Hmm. 
<laughs> Double rook end game. Rook takes b2 is playable there, I think. Maybe. White could have played rook f7 check in response to that, but this looks like it should be winning for black. And he is up a pawn, <coughs> and that passed f pawn is menacing. White's majority is not getting off the ground. Enoch is trying to play defense, but yeah, this is just a matter of time. Alright, I gotta get revenge against this guy. This is my very first opponent of the day. He played some very suspicious chess, <laughs> as you can tell by his setup. Once again, uh, okay, we'll go here. See if he'll trade on d2 with us. Mm, can you really do that? Check. Okay. Uh, I don't believe this. Let's take here. Let's go queen d4. And then if bishop d7, I will play bishop f6 and not let him castle. That's crucial to our strategy. We will not let him castle so easily. I don't think that move does anything. He can take on c4, but what's it really doing? Um, I guess I'll just play bishop g5. Maybe threaten queen f8 or queen f6. So he's going to go for a trade. I guess I'll keep trading with him. I can knock out all these pawns, though. That is annoying. Um, okay, let's do this. I might have to sacrifice one of my pieces to dissipate his play a little bit. Check. Let's go here. Get this pawn. Um, okay, h6 is helpful. Check. Mm, let's go here. Annoying opponent because he never resigns. <laughs> Check. Hate it when that happens. Okay, that's not going to help you. Nor Check. is that. Check. Check. I'll let you queen if you want. Checkmate. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, again, my technique is questionable. He just wasn't resigning, and yeah, he made it interesting. He won the c4 pawn. I probably should have a checkmate somewhere. No, don't you think? Like, I thought about queen c7, trying to enable rook d8. My king is a little bit open, though. So, hmm. And the sacrifice of, uh, oh, queen d6 maybe earlier. Maybe when I had my bishop on b4. And his queen was on b2, maybe queen d6. Maybe that was an option I missed. Let's go here. If he pops his queen out to b3, that's that's fine. <coughs> okay, I like my position. I think I'm better. Might be just winning a pawn now. Very well could be. Uh, let's bring the queen in. See what he wants to do about that. Trade with me. Let me get my knight into that square. Check. Let's go. Let's go here. And then do this. And arrange our pawns on light squares. Ah, uh, if he plays rook d2, I have this move. That is a trapped bishop. You got your bishop in too deep, Garapon. In too deep. Pretty sure I'm capable of winning this position. Alright, let's go f5. Check. That move might not have been accurate. But what are you going to do? I am up a pawn pretty clearly on this wing. Just go here. Now I'm winning f2.
Yeah, now Rook B1 is a threat. Checkmate. Unstoppable. Okay, we'll play a couple more games. Two more games. Decent amount of action for the wee hours in the morning. It's about 1 a.m. right now. Recording rather late today. I had a very busy day. So, <coughs> my apologies for not getting these videos up at my usual time. Usually I try to post them like at midnight, my time, U.S. Central Time or shortly thereafter, but sometimes if I haven't recorded them yet, it takes a while. just depends. Completely depends on how busy I am on a given day. But I try to stick to that. Waiting to be paired at the moment. Grandpa is in again. Anybody else playing? That same guy, Balashian. Used to play Grandpon all the time. Not so much anymore, but he was a frequent opponent of mine. I'd say 10 years ago when I was playing a lot on ICC. So it's kind of cool to see like the same guys over and over again, even after you've been away, away from the site for a while. So here we have Pot Pie. I'm going to give the same line a whirl. Oh, he doesn't. He knew about my line. He didn't want to go into it. Well, this line is known to be slightly better for white anyways, so no worries. White just has a structural advantage. <coughs> and black doesn't have much to show for it, in my opinion. Should probably play rook d8 here. Um, Alright, we don't really need our light score bishop. I'll try to sink the knight into c5. It's a good idea. If he takes on a2, I have b3 trapping his light score bishop. At the very least, this position is tough to Check. play for him. Bishop f8 probably should come. Play b3 now. Pawns on light squares. He needs that bishop on f8. If he doesn't put it there, it's going to be hard for him to defend. Rook b4. Okay, I'll withdraw this knight. There's so many little probing moves I can make, like this to attack c6. He just has a hard time keeping everything together. Um, retreat the rook. I guess I'll just take here. He can take on b3, but... Um, uh, rook c3. Check. Let's repeat once. Check. Doesn't want to repeat. Um, okay. Let's, let's go here. He can bring his queen into b1. Hmm. Check. Now he has that, yeah. Run the a-pawn. Yeah, he still hasn't played, or he finally played bishop f8. He'd been resisting playing that move for so long. Let's just go f4. He can take on e4. He finally notices it. But his time is so bad now. There's not much he can do. So, even though this line is um, not leaning to a huge edge for white, I mean, the structural advantage is like free play free play against that. So I, I never understood the appeal of this knight c6 move. He might just be playing it interchangeably with e5 in a bullet game, but in my opinion, this line is... I mean, if I knew that black would play knight c6, I would play the classical variation every time, because this is comfortable for white. So I'm at 2561. We will play one more game, and it will be platyboard that we're playing. Platy board from France. Okay, semi slot time. Go here. This line is good. It's kind of boring, though. All the bishops get traded. I'll go bishop g6. Let's spice it up. Mm, b5. Maybe I can work my way into uh, this square. Oh, let's go here. And he dropped a knight. He was just expecting to be able to maneuver into the square he wanted with no hesitation. Let's go f6, keep his knight out of e5, and then put this knight on c4. First we shall do this though, and then take his knight. Now it's gonna be a battle for the a file, which I will win. It helps when you're up a, uh, a knight, when you're battling for a file. Let's go here, we'll infiltrate. Um, now I have to watch out for um, Hmm, I have to watch out for some stuff. 
Here I'm threatening F2. Time warning. Let's go here. Now I let some stuff slip away a little bit. Check. It's unfortunate. Check. Meanwhile, he is playing at light speed. Wow, I've done a lot of time. He's just outright attacking me with no regard for human life. Check. Hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a disaster of a game. <laughs> what an absolute disaster of a game. <laughs> Uh, I got kind of cocky in that one. I like won a piece and I thought I was just going to win easily. <laughs> and again, I always think they're going to resign and then of course they don't resign. He just kept playing and like got his queen over. All right, Platty Borg, good game. Who is Platty Borg? Alan Pichot. Oh yeah. I remember getting frustrated when I lost to this guy one other time. But uh, all right, let's tabulate the results for this session. Let's see what, what we got there. He did play extremely fast. So to his credit, he, um, you know, he gave himself a chance. So I lost three games, and we had a session of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 games total. So 7 and 3. Lost some rating points, some games. Yeah, the games I lost were deplorable. I mean, <coughs> this game should have been a win in more ways than one, for sure. Um, innocent boy. Yeah, this, this, this game he just outplayed me. Nothing to do in there. But, uh, yeah, and definitely this last game, too. Not being able to win up a night. It was just like, he had enough threats to make it annoying. Like, queen g4, and I wasn't sure how to deal with um, the attack on g6 and also the c6 pawn being weak. Queen a2 was probably a do-nothing move. I don't think I should have played that. Because all that did was um, weaken c6. It leaves my queen no longer controlling that square. He did the right thing. I mean, once he saw that he was losing a piece, he just instantly started playing like as fast as he possibly could. So, all right, well, I will be back tomorrow with another bullet video. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.